Okay. This is the actual hat I wore back in the Ryder Cup in 1971, and I, I can't believe to this day that it still fits me. This is cheap plastic, but it's still got Jack Nicklaus's signature on it, and um, it's really the only uh, uh, souvenir I have left back from 1971. Back in 1971, the players could not bring their own caddy, so um, that's how I got in the draw to be a caddy for the Ryder Cup. I, over the years, a lot of people, members included, ha have asked me how much did I make for that week, and um, the PGA of America paid all the caddies $175, and all the American players except two gave their caddies a hundred and twenty-five dollar tip. So I made three hundred dollars for the week. Um, but back, you know, which to a lot of people says, you know, that's all. That's all for Jack Nicklaus. But back then, uh, we were only making four dollars for a, a single bag out here. So three hundred dollars seemed like thousands back then. Okay, the first time I met the Golden Bear was actually the second day. The second day of the. Uh, practice round. Uh, he didn't show, uh, Mr. Nicholas didn't show up the first day for the practice round. I didn't find that out till later on the day. I stood on the range, which it seemed like all, all morning and all afternoon, until I found out that he wasn't coming. I believe he was playing an exhibition uh, somewhere in another state. So I didn't actually meet him till the second day. And I, I simply uh, met him, I believe it was upstairs in the locker room. I, I walked up and introduced myself and uh, you know, everything went real good. I think he was probably surprised to see a 14-year-old kid show up uh, to be his caddy. Although Nicholas uh, won his last five matches, uh, the first match uh, almost got me in a little trouble. I, I remember coming back to the caddy house that day and um, the older caddies who were all jealous that, you know, I drew Jack Nicholas and they, uh, you know, even though Palmer and Trevino, there were other big names there, they were all jealous of me. They were much older than I was. I think most of the other caddies were 20 to 30 years old. Some were even in their 40s. But um, they came back and told me it was my fault that Jack lost the match. And I remember I kept saying it wasn't my fault. It wasn't my fault. And um, some of the caddies told me years later that, that I was actually in tears um, at the, because of the older caddies were giving me uh, trouble after Jack lost his first match. I, and I believe that one iron uh, that Jack was talking about um, earlier in his uh, piece was on number six in the right rough when he, ha he was in the trees and I think he was probably about 260 or 270 out and he decided to go for it and um, he cut a one iron down the left side and uh, it cut into the green and ran it up on the green. I believe that was on number six and um, you know he just hit a big monster cut and put it right on the green. Um, probably my best memory of the whole Ryder Cup was uh, the practice round when he was on number 16 and he reached the uh, green and two with a driver and a three wood to the back bunker which was about 630 yards which you know back in those days with a small persimmon driver and a, he was playing a McGregor Jack Nicholas golf ball it was uh, unheard of to reach that green and two, but he hit it over the green and two and since it was a practice round I remember him saying give me another ball kid or Mike or whatever he said and I threw him another ball and he, and he dropped a, a ball down and he hit a one iron right on the middle of the green and, I, and every day when I caddy there to this day and I get to that spot on number 16 I'd look and see how far that is that he hit that uh, one iron into that green. Um, thanks for letting me be part of your evening. Um, 40 years ago the Ryder Cup, one of the highlights of my life. Uh, to this day, I still enjoy caddying as much as I did back then and you know, running the, with George running the caddy program here, and I hope everybody uh, has a great evening.